Welcome to another episode of Let's Chat With. Joining me is voice actor, influencer, author, and mental health advocate, Zelda Black. How are Hello. you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. So most people have heard of you through TikTok videos. Can you tell me about them and why did you decide to join TikTok? Yeah, um, I actually joined TikTok because I used to work and live in Orlando, Florida, working for Disney. I did the Disney College program, but I got let go because of the pandemic and everything. So I was back home. I had no plans nor idea of what my future would be. So <laughs> I was bored and I was like, hmm, I used to do voices a lot when I was a kid. And I just stopped doing it because I got so busy. So I figured, why not try these impressions again? And once I started my Azula videos, that's when things really started going for me. Did you always wanted to be a voice actor? No, actually. <laughs> um, I wanted to be a lot of things. I was supposed to go to college for either psychology or screenwriting. I think it was just when, once I got to the screenwriting point, I was like way too nervous to be a voice actor, or, like get myself out there. But the pandemic and all the love that I received from TikTok really gave me that push to really advocate myself. What are some of your most popular videos that people have known? The first and probably forever iconic one would probably be all my Azula voices, all of those Azula skits. Um, I had sometimes Mr. Crocker as well. And right now people are really loving my South Park content. So speaking of uh, Azula, in one of your photos and Instagram posts and your videos on Twitter, you address mm -hmm. of Azula from Nickelodeon's Avatar Last Bedbender. In both the video and the picture, you have Grey Delalise who plays the voice. What was it like meeting her? Oh, she's such a sweetheart. I, you know, we actually met first at a, um, at like an online con. That's how we first met. And she was so sweet. She's like, wow, you really sound like Azula. You're just, you know, she's an absolute sweetheart literal just an angel she's the best you've done some uh, voice acting projects what are those projects hmm well right now i'm in the works of getting my animation demo and for those of you that aren't in voiceover animation demo pretty much is what allows you to pitch to be a voice actor in animation so i am in a few things right now but um they are coming out. <laughs> NDA is like, you know, it's a very tricky, non-disclosure agreement is super tricky to navigate and I am petrified of it every day. <laughs> besides Gray, who are some of your favorite uh, voice actors? Okay, besides Gray, I would have to, there's so many people in the voiceover industry that are so nice. Um, I freaking love Sissy Jones. Um, forget for all of you that don't know, Sissy Jones is Lilith on the Owl House, which is also mm -hmm. another popular content of mine. That's actually how we met. She really liked my Owl House dubs that I did, and she is just an absolute sweetheart. Um, I got to meet her as well. Uh, let me see, Debbie Derryberry. I have not had the pleasure of meeting Debbie Derryberry, but wonderful. She seems absolutely wonderful. Are there anybody from TikTok or non TikTokers that you would like to work with that do voice acting? I to do um i think i'd really like to meet uh anna brisbane uh brizzy mm -hmm. voices or shelby young i feel like we would have a great time together <laughs> so now your talents uh, exp expand beyond visual they involve writing the, the written word you wrote a book called butterfly words can you tell me about the book and why you wrote it yeah so um i pretty much wrote that to primarily tackle all the issues going on with mental health um, while i was growing up it was very much not talked about nobody wanted to talk about it and just dealing with mental health issues myself, it was just very difficult to try and find somebody that would understand or even want to help or even know how to help. Not a lot of people knew how to tackle it. So um, I wrote that for a few of my friends who are struggling and a few of my friends who were struggling and are unfortunately no longer with us. The poems cover many themes like suicide, depression, alcoholism, self-harm and more. Why did you need to talk about these items, uh, these themes in the books? Because I feel like not a lot of people talk about it. What makes my book so different compared to other poetry books is the fact that um, it covers the anger too. I am not sure if this is a common thing, but I, you know, when my first friend had committed suicide, I felt very angry and just in such a lost place because I was like 13, 14. I wasn't sure why anybody would want to take their life. And like at such a young age, I was like, well, it was just very confusing. So I felt the need to tackle those. And it was just an outlet as well. Poetry has always been an outlet for me. As I said in the intro, you're a mental health advocate. Why? Is it because of your own personal struggles with mental health? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, my own personal struggles, uh, the struggles of my friends. I had a lot of friends with mental health issues growing up, and there was no adults that were willing to help or knew how to help. So it put me in a very frustrating spot where I felt like I had to be the adult. I felt like I had to save everybody. And if there, you know, if it was more openly talked about today, I mean, I can't even imagine how many lives would be saved. Before writing the book, did you find it hard to talk about mental health? I did. And I felt really nervous releasing this because I knew a lot of people that I know are going to be reading this book and they're going to be overanalyzing it thinking, you know, I didn't want them to treat me like glass. And that's what I think what makes people so nervous to talk about their mental health issues. They don't want to seem like a burden or somebody that you'll have to tiptoe around for the rest of your life. So it was really nerve wracking releasing it, knowing who was going to buy it. Do you think the discussion of a person's mental health has become more prevalent due to the COVID pandemic over the last couple of years? I think it's definitely been a push. It has definitely been a push. It's just that struggle of sometimes it definitely made it worse. The pandemic has made mental health a lot worse, but I believe it's been a push in the right direction um, because of the pandemic. I got to talk in a mental health panel, an online one, and I felt like these online panels are easier for everybody to gain access to, and it's not like restricted to location. What advice do you have someone for dealing with mental health? I just, I can say this till I am, you know, I can say this 500 times, no matter what, everybody says it, but you're not alone. And I know sometimes that doesn't make it any better because it doesn't matter if a thousand people are suffering with the same thing you're hurting right now. So I just want people to know that even though the illness gets to you and it makes you think that nobody's going to miss you or you're a burden, that it's wrong. What's the one thing that people need to do in relation to their mental health every day? Try to find a good outlet. At one point, voiceover was my outlet. Now it's kind of becoming my job, so <laughs> I need to find a new outlet. Um, but find something that you love doing and try and find like, time to meditate. Try to find try to find time to go to, into nature. It's been increasingly harder since living in Los Angeles. Um, but for me, finding peace and quiet, finding something to draw or some, you know, just a way to escape the thoughts in your head. So going back to your voice acting, you've done a lot of on your videos, you've done South Park. Owl House and a bunch of other shows and stuff. What's a couple of shows that you would actually like to go and voice over for that you haven't done yet? Oh, I would have I would have loved, I mean, this show is already gone, but I would have loved to have been an avatar. And I look forward to Avatar Studios coming back, you know? <laughs> um, I would also love to do South Park. I would really love to, you know, just be anybody or a Scooby Doo. Just give me anything. I will take janitor number three. Just I would just love to be on there. Because of Avatar, you like keep telling me about that. And what do you think of the Avatar live action TV, uh, Netflix series that they're thinking of? Okay, okay, good. <laughs> I <laughs> thought you were going to talk about the other one. Uh, the M. Night Shyamalan was like, eh, trash. I have good hopes because I'm seeing accurate representation with, you know, I saw with Azula, it's accurate representation with Iroh and Katara. So I look forward to it. Weird question. Has anyone ever told you that you look like the actress Rachel Lee Cook? Yes, actually, yes, <laughs> yes. I get told that so many times. It's so funny because when I first started my old job, uh, they were like, you look like a celebrity. I can't remember who, Rachel Lee Cook? Yeah, <laughs> I do, I do get that a lot. Have you ever met her? No, no, I actually, I've only, I don't really know what she's in. I've seen her face because I've like looked her up and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I can see that but I'm not really sure what she's in. She did the original movie with Freddie Prince Jr., She's All That, from the 90s, and then she did okay. the Netflix series called He's All That, where it's a remake with the guy instead of the girl. Hmm. I don't think I've seen She's All That, but now, I know, I know I have to because everybody keeps telling me. <laughs> okay, so final question. Where can people find more information about yourself? Website, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yep. So um, I'm Legend of Z on all platforms, but uh, for more like legitimate stuff or like voiceover work, you can always check out my website, ZeldaDianaBlack.com. And that's where you can find me. Okay. So thank you, uh, Zelda, for joining me on this episode of Let's Chat With. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.